Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us today. Our guest in studio today is functional nutritionist, author, artist, yoga practitioner, and internationally recognized lifestyle medicine expert, Dr. Deanna Minich. She's here today to talk with us about her brand new book, Whole Detox, a 21-day personalized program to break through barriers in every area of your life, and also to discuss functional nutrition. And currently, she is a fellow of the American College of Nutrition, a certified nutrition specialist, a certified functional medicine practitioner, and registered yoga teacher. How are you doing today, Deanna? I'm doing well. Thank you so much. Now, um, you are a certified nutrition specialist. Um, As I said, you are Dr. Deanna Minich. Uh, Let our listeners know exactly what type of a doctor are you as a food and spirit practitioner? Yeah, I'm a PhD type of doctor. So, you know, you've got all different types of doctors, a doctor of research, Mm -hmm a doctor of medicine, and I'm a doctor of research. And so I've spent, gosh, seven years in graduate school studying nutritional biochemistry. Okay. And uh, is this something that you were interested in just because, you know, you went to college and said, you know, let me find out what I'm going to do with this with these student loans? <laughs> or is this something that you've been <laughs> interested in, you know, from the beginning? You know, it started when I was very young, um, and, and so I had this imprint about food and eating, nutrition, thanks to my mom from a very early age, and I always thought I wanted to be a doctor, a medical doctor, but when I started working for medical doctors, I just felt like, you know what, that's just not me. It, it didn't feel fulfilling. It didn't feel like there were a lot of answers for many patients. And so I defaulted to what I was brought up with, which was nutrition. Okay. And so I went to um, get my master's in nutrition, and then I went on for my Ph.D. in nutrition. Now, you've got a new book out, Whole Detox, a 21-day personalized program to break through barriers in every area of your life. Are you saying that uh, it takes 21 days to turn things around, or is it just 21 days the beginning of the rest of your nutritional life? You know, um, there is some research that suggests that it takes about 21 days to break a habit. And so if we give ourselves that three weeks, you know, the the first seven to ten days of the program is probably the most tender time. So that's when we come off of caffeine, we come off of sugar and a lot of the different foods that we're eating. We start living differently and we start feeling differently. And then we create that rhythm. We get that a little bit more anchored into our daily life. And sometimes it takes a little bit longer. So I like the 21 days. I've used that most with patients. I think that for some people they can do it in a shorter time frame and other people may need longer. But 21 days seems to be what is middle of the road for most people wanting to make changes. Talking a lot about detox, detoxing based on what you're putting into your body. How do you um, couple exercise with that? Oh, that it's huge. You know, the ways that the body detoxes is through pooping, peeing, sweating, crying, uh, and and peeing. <laughs> you know, all of these these different things, right? So sweating is part of that, and we have to. Uh, most of these these toxic compounds come out in sweat, and 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 many people don't realize. In fact, most things come out in sweat that don't come out in other places. Mm. So if we're not sweating, we're not getting our heart rate up, we're not exercising our muscles, but most of all, you know, this is underestimated. I'm glad that you even mentioned it. We're not detoxing. So if you go to the gym or you're outside, just think of this as a, a multifaceted activity. You're not only helping your heart, you're helping your whole body. Okay, so I'm helping my whole body and um, I'm eating right, or at least I think I'm eating right because I'm um, I'm on one of these diets that um, I've been convinced is perfectly wonderful and it's, I can eat all the meat I want or I can eat all the bread or all the potatoes or, you know, the Mediterranean diet, the, the ketogenic diet. What are all, the, all these, do they work or is it just one fad diet after another? You know, many people are in search of the holy grail diet. You know, what is the diet for them? And quite honestly, I think that eventually it's going to come down to a personalized approach. And I do talk about that in my book, Whole Detox, that even though this is a 21-day program for most people, I like to personalize it so that not everybody is doing the same thing because what we're learning, especially with the uh, Human Genome Project, which was completed in 2003, Mm -hmm. is that we're all so different genetically. So we have different ethnic backgrounds and we've got different environments that we currently live in and we've got to look at the really the um, the combination of how all of those different features come together in our lives. Mm -hmm. 
are these approaches that can be taught even though we haven't done them, f- you know, for most of our life as far as, you know, eating is one thing. You, you pick something out that's healthier than the day before. But when it comes to, you know, changing how you think, what you believe, all of this based around the changes that you're feeling simply by changing your diet. Is that what we're talking about here? It is. And Neil, when I have had people change their diet and we start letting go of certain foods and we start bringing in other foods and people start feeling better, sometimes that's enough of a hook for them to keep going. Wow. So I think about all the people um, that I've had in whole detox programs. And before they start the program, I have them do a questionnaire, a survey, just to see how their bodies are doing. Mm-hmm. And I ask them about their emotions, their mind, how is everything. When they finish the program, on average, we see a 50 to 60% reduction in a lot of the symptoms that they had. So in other words, they're sleeping better, they've got more energy, they may have lost some weight, their joint pain goes down, they're able to digest foods better. So that's pretty exciting. And for many people, that is the impetus. That is the catalyst that keeps them going, wanting to make these changes. I understand that there's not a lot of uh, focus on nutrition in med school. Uh, Being uh, focusing wholly on nutrition, what type of reception do you get from uh, traditional practitioners when your focus is so much on nutrition as opposed to uh, prescriptions? Well, I think that this is the age of teams of healers. I I think that we can all work together. It's also not just about food. There are times that we need acute procedures in medicine. There are other things that we need, maybe more physical therapy or exercise. So I really think that this is the age where people need multiple people to work with them in order to get them on track. You know, food is clearly medicine, and we're learning that food is information, and it speaks to our cells. But we've got to do more than that. It's not just about finding the the silver bullet diet and, and just making sure that we have that super pill in order to, to really affect the change. I think it's only part of it. Surely yours is not the only method of detoxification focusing on the foods that we eat. Are you saying that this is a more comprehensive approach or are there different detoxification programs that you may recommend for someone, say, who is diabetic or someone who maybe has cancer or some type of other uh, malady? You know, there are many detox programs out there, and a lot of them are pretty shady, Mm -hmm. if I may say so, just in terms of uh, their validity, what they do. For some people, they actually get worse in their health. Mm -hmm. So I look at certain things that involve extreme fasting or just drinking juices or um, having pills uh, and and only certain pills for certain days. Mm -hmm. And I have seen that some patients actually fare um, worse And in in the interim, they're told that, oh, you're supposed to have this crisis. I don't think that you're supposed to have such a crisis and and get worse and get swollen and get worse pain and get worse sleep uh, as a result of a detox. So there's a lot of um, noise out there. And I would be really cautious, very conscientious about the different detox programs that are available to people. There are also lots of nutritional detoxes out there that can be good for people, and typically they do focus on nutrition. So they might do a a food program, maybe some dietary supplements, which is good. Um, But overall, there aren't very many at all. In fact, none that I can think of right now that are truly comprehensive and focus on everything. It's it's really healing in a nutrition and lifestyle kind of way. So looking at what people are eating and then looking at how they are living. So there are 21 days for the program. And in the book, every day, you can see what, what am I supposed to do on day one. So day one has the meals that you're eating, the shopping list. And then it has uh, six other things that you can do that day, looking at your emotions, looking at your thoughts, looking at your movement. I give movement prescriptions for every day of the detox. Some of them are Tai Chi or yoga, uh, aerobic, maybe strength training. So I mix it up because I think that one of the things that I've learned uh, being in the health field for 25 years is that variety is medicine, you know, having shaking things up and not doing the same thing every day mm-hmm. can be really good for us. So I give that variety in the program. What about simply um, getting rid of stuff by not eating? Uh, is that 
a viable that way can to work. work that can work for some people absolutely that would be called the elimination diet mm-hmm. where people let go of certain things like gluten or dairy or sugar or eggs or alcohol or caffeine mm-hmm. and sure that can help tremendously but what I have seen in my practice is that it can only get people most people so far and what ends up happening is they typically return to those substances mm-hmm. or foods And they start living a life, again, where they're not really optimal because they've never created lifestyle change around those omissions in their diet. Do you find that insurance companies are making concessions for people that change their diets? I mean, uh, in a lot of companies now, if you're walking, there's a a, uh, Mm -hmm. a reduction Mm -hmm. in your premium. If you stop smoking, there's a reduction in your premium. Um, What about um, changing the way one eats in conjunction with those two things? Is that something that you've seen that insurance companies are are jumping on as as an incentive? I haven't seen a specific reference to foods and people eating certain things, uh, but I have seen that they have certain restrictions if you're a certain weight or, like you said, certain activity or whether or not you, you smoke. So if, if you're doing certain measures that are known and demonstrated to change one's health, then, yeah, I, I do think that people should be incentivized for their efforts because it takes a lot of work to be healthy sometimes. You know, it's not, uh, especially in busy lives, uh, as most of us have, we have to go out of our way to do these things. And so it's great to see that people are rewarded for that. Now, um, as we wrap up, uh, as the author of Whole Detox, a 21-day personalized program to break through barriers in every area of your life, um, a young a young person is um, heading off to college and, and they're considering functional uh, medicine. What do you mm-hmm. say to them? Go for it. <laughs> it's the medicine of the future. You know, functional medicine uh, encompasses really looking at the, the whole person, and there's a certain teaching way of doing it mm-hmm. through the Institute for Functional Medicine. Mm-hmm. And I think it's the way to go. It's, it's really looking at the root cause as to why people have certain things. So, you know, you go through medical school, you get your training, and then you focus on becoming more integrative or functional in your approach, and that can easily be done. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. We've been in studio talking with Dr. Deanna Minich, has a PhD in medical sciences, uh, human nutrition and metabolism, and an MS in human nutrition and metabolism. Now, during her scientific study, she also studied ancient uh, healing arts, such as traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, currently, she's a fellow of the American College of Nutrition, a certified nutrition specialist, a certified functional medicine practitioner, and a registered yoga teacher. Uh, her passion is teaching a whole self approach to nourishment and bridging the gaps between science, spirituality, and art in medicine. It's been great having you here with us today, Deanna. It's been awesome. Thanks, Neil. Thank you. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm. And you can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes.